Hello everyone, this is Dr. Maria Azizian. Welcome back. Today's topic is whether there is a correlation between diabetes and gut microbiome. It is very interesting that more and more research shows how important our gut microbiome is for a variety of chronic diseases. And in functional medicine, when we look at the patient who has multiple chronic diseases, usually the easiest way to start, especially when you're lost or overwhelmed as a provider, is to start with the gut because that's where a lot of answers are to be found. So, of course, there is a correlation between the um, insulin, uh, between the glucose metabolism, and between the microbiome of the gut. But first, I'd like to point out that in looking at diabetes, the focus on func functional medicine is on prevention of diabetes. So when we look at diabetes, we look at pre-diabetes or pre-pre-diabetes when there is only mildly impaired glucose metabolism that shows as a very slightly impaired um, elevation of glucose. And a lot of people at that time um, don't worry about it because their numbers are only mildly elevated. However, that is exactly the time to look into it um, as it is much easier to prevent than to repair or eradicate this uh, horrible chronic illness down the road. So what happens is that first we have impaired um, glucose and then we have insulin resistance. They kind of go uh, together. Uh, then you have non-insulin dependent diabetes. Then you have insulin dependent diabetes. And then eventually what happens is that there is a irreversible damage of the cells of the pancreas that are responsible for production of insulin. So essentially your poor pancreas shuts down in production of insulin. And that's of course a severe uh, condition, severe presentation of uh, diabetes. So how is it connected with our gut microbiome? Um, there are several areas where there is that connection and there is a lot of um, overlap and a lot of cause and effect to the point to, or to the degree that it's not studied that well and it is a very robust area of research. So um, one of the things is um, talking about gut is that the gut is very important in metabolic regulation in general. So gut processes, gut bacteria are responsible for processing a big portion of sugars and fats that we um, we take. So if there is a problem with gut bacteria, obviously the way it's going to be metabol metabolized would be different and that will affect how much glucose is circulating in our blood. The second aspect of the workings of the gut is how um, uh, uh, the gut bacteria can cause inflammation. And yet at the same time, there are gut bacteria that actually prevent or decrease inflammation. So it can go both ways. But what is diabetes? What is um, obesity? Uh, they are called diseases of chronic inflammation, especially obesity. You may have heard that term that obesity is a, um, a chronic inflammation disorder. And indeed it is when you look at it from the biochemical standpoint. So of course, having alterations in the gut bacteria either would increase the level of inflammation in the body and that would go through uh, secretion of cytokines and other uh, factors of inflammatory cascade or may decrease inflammation and that would affect how productive or how efficient insulin secretion is. So there is definitely a connection. The other connection is gut barrier function of the gut, uh, which is also called leaky gut when it's not functioning properly. And what it does, it protects us from toxins. So there are tight junctions in the gut that uh, serve as a, sort of a filtration for toxins and unwanted substances. And when that fails, then uh, these toxins can actually create havoc 
in an ability of the body of the gut to again absorb and address sugars and um, other substances that can lead to increase in glucose. So leaky gut is definitely one of the culprits in, um, in glucose elevation and in um, somebody having impaired um, glucose issues. Uh, the next one is a very interesting one is that um, the gut bacteria uh, secrete short chain fatty acids and these short chain fatty acid uh, acids are very beneficial for the body in terms of decrease of inflammation and in general in terms of fermentation of sugar and these short chain fatty acids they are um, you derived from uh, plant sources and that's another reason to uh, go heavy on uh, plants and not so heavy on animal fat so those short chain fatty acids are essentially what is the result of the intake of fiber so when you take in fiber your gut creates these short chain fatty acids the um, other aspect that is actually studied more and more nowadays is um, interaction of the gut with medications because there are medications that decrease absorption or could increase actually absorption um, de uh, depending on the uh, gut composition for example a uh, medication such as metformin can lead or can cause uh, gut uh, bacteria to produce more of those short chain fatty acids that i mentioned earlier so it has a beneficial effect so that's why metformin is um, prescribed in um, uh, diabetes and it has a variety of beneficial effects but the way the mechanism of those beneficial effects uh, vary and one of the mechanism is this one is its alteration or stimulation of um, gut flora to produce more of these short chain fatty acids yet at the same time it has um, some not such good effects such as it may lead to diarrhea and in general to gi discomfort to abdominal cramps again due to the same um, capacity of altering gut flora so um, so it goes both ways the gut flora can affect the way medications are absorbed diabetes medications are absorbed and diabetes medications such as for example metformin can affect uh, the gut flora in both beneficial and not so beneficial way so very interesting topic that i'm sure will uh, keep uh, growing and growing in our understanding of a variety of mechanisms of how it works thank you very much for listening until next time bye, -bye.